That's why shotguns are great, people. You hit one shot, clear a whole plate rack. Don't any of you have the guts to play for blood? I'm your huckleberry. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're out here on the range today, and I've got the Panzer M4. Uh, I've got about 550 rounds through this shotgun so far, so I figured I'd come out today and put another 100 rounds through it, let you guys see the last 100 rounds of the 650 round review. Uh, and then once we're done out here, we'll see how it does. I'm going to go in there and go to the tabletop, show you guys some things I've learned about this shotgun over the last couple of months I've owned it. Um, I know I'm, you know, right now when I get this last 100 rounds through it, 650 rounds is more than a lot of people put through a shotgun in their lifetime. Um, so far, I've been really impressed with the uh, reliability of this thing. I have had a couple of small issues, but nothing reliability-wise. The only issues I had was with the collapsible stock, but I did get that repaired, and I'll address that more later when we do the tabletop. So for now, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to start with some uh, birdshot. This is a combination of Winchester uh, number 6 and number 7. It's all rated at above 1,300 feet per second. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I'll do, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to ghost load the shotgun. First thing first, shotgun is clear, bolts forward. We're going to load five rounds in the tube. gonna pull the charging handle back just far enough to get a shell in push it down onto the carrier take another shell put it into the chamber it's awkward doing that on camera but there you go there's seven rounds in there now take the safety off First seven rounds is good so far. So now that I've showed you how to ghost load it from this point on, I'm just going to run it. We'll just do uh, one in the chamber, five in the tube, just to save time. One thing I've noticed throughout all the time I've owned it, when I first got this, it was a motherfucker to load the shells in the tube to the point where it was cutting my thumb after every range trip. That barrel is starting to get heat up. For doing these mag dumps, this is probably a good shotgun to run gloves on, but I didn't bring any gloves, so I'm just going to thug it out. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's a lot of, uh, I can hear the pellets coming back down on the roof of this old barn. A lot of this shit I'm shooting is steel shot. Now, I'm far enough away. We're about 25 yards here at the table, so I'm not getting hit with any of the splashback, but I am wearing ears and eyes, and if anything does come back, I'd be fine. But steel shot on steel targets. We'll get you ricocheted. And again, this is all birdshot. Starting to get low on the box. We're going to have to mix and match a little bit now. Some of this shit, I'm not really sure what it is, but we'll see how it runs. It runs. Since I've owned this, I've cleaned it one time at about uh, close to 400 rounds. Haven't cleaned it again since. That barrel's really starting to get hot now. You gotta watch where you put your hands. We are burning through this fucking box of bird shot. Oh, 
Oh, I love the smell of gunpowder. I don't know about you guys. Six rounds of bird shot left. Now that son of a bitch is hot, so I'm going to give it a minute to cool down before I start going with these bucks. But today I brought out some Monarch. This is the Academy brand. This is double up buck rated at 1,345 feet per second. And this shit is definitely high brass. One thing you do notice shooting this with that pistol grip on it, after a while it starts to dig into the web of your hand. Uh, it's not terrible, but it ain't, you know, it ain't a hug either. That's why shotguns are great, people. You hit one shot, clear a whole plate rack. That must be that mythical spread they're always talking about. You don't even have to aim it, you know? All those other FUD lore tales. The sound of a shotgun racket will make a thief shit his pants at 150 minutes of... <laughs> What about you guys? My fucking arms are getting tired. Next time I do a shotgun test, I'm going to make somebody come out here with me. Not even the shooting arm is getting tired. It's that fucking support arm. All right, last three rounds of buckshot here. Go ahead and mix in two rounds of this bird too. Why not? Just to get a full tube. Alright, that's all the buckshot. Take a break on that for a second. Let my shoulder rest. We're going to be switching to these slugs. They are uh, Sterling Tornado Slugs. They're, they're kind of shitty. I think I've said that in one of my other videos. But I got a bunch of them. They're rated at 1,460 feet per second. I mean, they work. I don't have an issue with that. They're just, they are not reliable. Not reliable. They're, they're very reliable. They're not accurate at all. But they work. And thankfully they signify the end of this test because my arms are really getting sore. I mean, they're not that bad, but. 
There's five. I'll do five again. Oh, this is going to tear up my fucking target. I'm going to try to hit the field with these just so I don't have to tear up my targets up close. Nothing. These usually tear the damn steel targets off of my 25 yard range, so I'd rather not do that today. But why not? We'll take pot shots. I want to see if I can hit that fucking 200 yard gong with this thing. Not yet. So far, a shotgun is the only firearm I own that I haven't been able to hit that 200 with. I've hit it with rifles, I've hit it with pistols, 22s. I just haven't hit it with a shotgun yet. So it would be cool if we could do that today. So I'm gonna take these at the 200 again. We'll go ahead and extend this stock out a little bit. Hey, you fucking heard it here. 200 yards with a shotgun. All right. At this point, I don't give a shit what else happens. That was fucking awesome. Uh, I've officially hit. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if it got caught up, but it cleared itself. Uh, I've officially hit that fucking gong at 200 with a shotgun with slugs. I'm fucking stoked. Now, was it luck or can I do it again? I don't know, but I got five shots left. We're going to see. God damn it, I did it twice. Panzer M4. Lord forgive me. The Panzer M4. Uh, what else can I say? First shotgun I've ever managed to hit 200 yards with, and I did it twice in a one take video. I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, the gun just ran flawlessly for another 100 rounds. 650 rounds total through it. No issues whatsoever as far as reliability. Uh, one issue with the stock, I'll talk about that when we get in on the tabletop. Uh, I'm thrilled. I can't wait to see this footage. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you at the tabletop. Peace. All right, guys. Welcome back into the tabletop portion of this. Uh, literally just walked in from on the range. Still fucking just thrilled that I was able to make two 200-yard shots with the 18 and a half inch 12-gauge with... Some horrible slugs, if we're being honest, but uh, just completely fucking thrilled. All right, so let's get into what I think of this shotgun. Um, I'll go ahead and save you some time. I fucking love it. Uh, the one issue I had with it, and I've talked about this in one other video, but I'll go ahead and go through it again. On this stock, right back here, there's a vertical pin. Let me loosen this up so I can go through that again. All right, so right in here, there's a vertical pin. It's the pin that actually engages the notches on your buffer tube. In my, with my original buffer tube, this pin walked itself out of the stock at about, shit, I don't know, I wanna say it was around 300 rounds. And so I was out there shooting it with my brother-in-law, pulled the trigger, gun went off, the whole stock just collapsed. And when it did, it took a nice little chunk, let's see out of uh, the teeth right here. This is where it was engaged. So, you know, at the time I was kind of bummed. I couldn't figure out what happened. Uh, I put the original stock back on it and then just finished the day. But when I came back inside, I noticed that the pin was sticking out like three quarters of an inch. Well, that's when I realized that that pin is what engages here. So what I did is I contacted uh, Panzer, told him what happened. It did take a while for them to reply back, but there, I found out there's only one person working for Panzer Arms, doing their customer service. So if you do have some kind of issue, just be patient. They will get with you. But they did go ahead and send me a new buffer tube for free. They didn't charge shipping or anything. They just sent it out to me. 
Um, I took the pin out of this stock. Uh, it's just a press fit. You take an eighth inch punch, push it from the bottom, the pin will come out, shorten it about three sixteenths of an inch to an eighth of an inch, put it back in, take a punch and smack around the edges of this hole with the punch to deform the metal and you'll stake that pin in place. You'll never have that problem. This shotgun should never have that problem again. Uh, it's been fine since I made that repair and I haven't had any more issues with it. <clears throat> um, so I got this shortly after Valentine's Day. It's now April the 6th when I'm filming this. So between, let's see, got it for Valentine's Day. My wife bought it. So I'll say I've had this guns from February the 20th. It took about a week for me to get it until now. Um, I've put now 650 rounds through it. The first few hundred were buckshot, and then I ran some slugs. After that, I considered it broke in. I started running birdshot through it. This has fed every single round I put through this shotgun without hesitation. Birdshot, buckshot, slugs, everything I put through it, with the caveat that I've only put rounds through this shotgun that were rated at 1,300 feet per second or higher. <clears throat> That's just something I've found in my experience shooting semi-auto shotguns. If it's not at least 1,300 you're going to have issues. I have got reports from other guys that say they've ran 1250 or so or anything above 1200 has run for them. I just don't buy anything with that low of a uh, velocity. So anything you put through 1300 feet per second or higher is going to be good to go. Um, other than that, that one issue, no problems whatsoever. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and we'll disassemble the shotgun. It's been cooled off enough now, so I think we're safe to do that. Safety is on. Go ahead and loosen this up. I just want to see what the internals look like, and we'll do this live for everybody. Shit, I got to take that off. Four millimeter T-handle to remove this. Okay. Barrel clamps out of the way. We'll go ahead and take the barrel out now. Get these hand guards off. Pull the barrel off. As you can see, it definitely has some carbon. We'll take all that apart here in a minute. Go ahead and get my bolt out, or charging handle rather. Take the bolt out, take a look at that. Bolt face looks good. It's honestly not even that dirty. Hammer shows no signs of deformation or wear. That's a good sign. Okay. Like I said, I cleaned this around 400 rounds, and honestly, the last 250, it's not even that bad. Just a wipe is really getting it. Those are definitely dirty. All right, let's go ahead and take the trigger pack off and look at that. Pull that out of the way. Your charging handle is pretty much your entire disassembly tool. Have that pin out. And pull that out. I'm just going to rotate that because I don't want to damage that pin. Let's take a look at our hammer. It's greasy as shit. Let's wipe it off. Okay. Definitely got some wear on the hammer. But I'm not seeing anything that I would worry about. Let me try to zoom in so you guys can see a little better. Okay. So nothing I'm really concerned about there. That looks good to me. Just going to wipe it out. Let me grab a brush. This will be a good opportunity to go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning. Okay. Yeah, that is good to see. No deformation in the hammer. Take a rag. I'm going to go ahead and wipe out the inside of the receiver. So I had to go off camera there for a minute just so I could get a better angle. Go back to half zoom. Okay. So now I'm looking inside the receiver. I'm looking for any serious wear. I don't know if you guys can see that right in there. There is a little wear 
where you can see the back of the uh, bolt carrier is hitting the receiver. Uh, as far as I can tell, that's fine. I don't see any major issues that concern me. No bad burrs. It feels pretty good. I think it looks worse than it is. So I'm good there. Get that out of the way. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the trigger pack back in just to get it out of the way since I've already kind of hit it with the brush. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see if that pin goes back through. All right, pins back in on that. I'm going to move that for now, just get it out of the way so I can work on the rest of this. Let's bring the barrel back. Take the charging handle, break this loose. I want to see what this gas system looks like. I am genuinely thrilled with this shotgun, guys. For 500 bucks, I mean, it may not say Benelli. And people on the forums will talk shit and call it cheap Turkish trash. But not me. I've shot it. I've tested it. I'll stand by it. This might be my new home defense weapon. I put a light on it. I wouldn't have any issue whatsoever leaving this thing in my bedroom for bumps in the night. I do have a feeling that these O-rings on this are going to be shot to shit. So I may have to go pick up a pack of O-rings. Can't tell if it's still threading or if that O-ring has just got it. I feel like it's off the fucking threads. Yeah, it's just that O-ring seal. Okay. Yeah, the O-rings kind of beat the fuck up, but... I don't know if you can see that. The O-ring has definitely seen better days. But it's still present. I'm definitely going to go ahead and I'll get some O-rings for that and replace it. See what this piston looks like. Whoo, that piston is dirty. Okay, see how we can clean that. Scotch bright. And let me go ahead and grab one of these brushes. Or a couple of them. Just fuck it. Variety is the spice of life. Okay. Okay, carbon's coming off pretty easy. Go ahead and take that other one out first and then we'll clean them both. Okay, actually that O-ring's not that bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of them anyway. Oh, look at the carbon coming out of that thing. All right, she was dirty. While we're at it, I know I've had a couple of guys ask me how to take this bolt apart. And I'll be honest, I have not done it yet. So, you guys don't want to watch me fumble around with this thing. Let me do a little research. I'll make a separate video on disassembling the bolt. Alright, let's get some spray. Go ahead and spray these down. Show you a trick I have for cleaning. Is this the right way to do it? Honestly, I don't know, but it does work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piston, chuck it in a drill, and I am going to spin that bad boy. 
And there we go, that looks pretty good. Let's take this brush. Take that. And that looks pretty good. I wouldn't put a ton of force on it just because it is, you know, I mean, it's a steel part, so I really shouldn't be able to hurt it by spinning it. But like I said, I don't know if that's actually something you're supposed to do or not, but I did it. And it works pretty well for me. Take the brush again and hit the gaps. Look at that, good as new. Okay. Just a little tip how to shine those up real fast. Get all that carbon off. I don't know if you're supposed to do it, but I did it, so fuck it. Okay. Actually, inside the gas tubes don't look that bad, so I'm going to let that ride. Go ahead and put this back together. Take the good one, put it back on that side, because that's where it came from. I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble this now. I know I need some new O-rings, but I don't have them yet. And I don't want to lose shit, so I'll just know, hey, you need to put fucking new O-rings in this thing. Take this one. Yeah, that O-ring is a problem. Let me see if I can clean this up a little bit. And again, I'll see if that'll seat now. Again, when you're putting this back together, it's pretty important to make sure you don't cross thread it. Right there, that was trying to. Apply some good downward pressure. Make sure you're threads are trying to mate up appropriately. Pull that back out. Maybe I do need to run a brush through that one. Yeah, let's run a brush through that. Sorry guys, if you didn't feel like watching me take this thing apart. Got some shit on the thread. I just need to break it loose. I know I've got a brush in here. There it is. Just so you guys know, pretty sure this is a Maybe a 45 caliber brush. But it works. All right, let's see if that made a difference. Put 
Them back. Okay, let's get that batch seated. That O ring is trying to fuck my day up. Okay, let's get that O ring back in play. Alright, there we go. There we go. This is part of the game, y'all. It's just working carbon out of shit. Okay. We well, got her in there now. Smack the camera a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and cut this here. Once I get this thing threaded correctly, I'll be back and I'll explain whatever happened. All right, so what I figured out, there's some carbon in the threads here. I'm just going to have to clean that out and then we'll put this thing back together. All right, guys, I got it back together. I ended up having to take a brush. And really get in there, there was a lot of carbon that was built up in the threads. Once I got the carbon out and just cleaned it a little better, everything went back together fine. Sometimes, best thing to do when you get into a situation like that, I've learned this the hard way many times in the past. Stop what you're doing. Go have a smoke, take a break, whatever you do. Because if you start getting frustrated, you're probably going to fuck something up. But, got everything back together fine. No issues at all. Definitely going to have to replace that uh, O-ring. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace both of them. So that's one thing I would recommend if you're going to get this shotgun. Grab a few extra O-rings. Just have them handy. <clears throat> the ones they supply. I don't know how long they're supposed to last. But they don't last forever. That's for sure. Alright. So I went ahead and scrubbed the barrel out also while the camera was off. I didn't think you guys needed to see how to run a barrel brush. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put everything back together. All right, everybody. So I got it put back together. Uh, what I found was that there was carbon buildup in the gas system that was stopping the end cap from threading on correctly. I just scrubbed everything down, and then I was able to put it back together, no problem. Um, so that is the review for the Panzer M4. Uh, some final thoughts on it. Like I said, the only issue I've had was the problem with that stock pin walking out. Panzer was cool enough to send me a replacement for the buffer tube on that, so we're good to go there. Um, no issues otherwise, man. 650 rounds, this thing runs really reliably. 100% uh, reliability is what I've experienced since we bought this. Um, sights are good. It's got the ghost ring sights. They're not canned, clearly. If they were canned, I don't think I'm hitting really anything, but 200 yards would definitely be an issue. Uh, as far as the specifications on this shotgun, I'm not going to memorize them. I've tried, but I'll go ahead and annotate them now. There you go. So that'll tell you everything you need to know about the length, the weight, you know, the chamber size, which is a three-inch chamber. I can tell you that. Capacity. Um, aftermarket parts uh, availability. It's pretty much anything that'll fit up an LEM4, with the exception of the magazine tube extension it's for some reason and it, honestly this one may be different this is the uh, third generation model but I know in the first two generations of the Panzer M4 this extension was different so I'm not really sure if this one is uh, exactly the same as the Benelli one now I know I've seen some reviews that say it is but I haven't seen anyone install one yet so I'm waiting to see on that uh, if I do find an extension that fits I'll be sure to let you guys know I know there's a Dave's Metalworks. He makes a full seven round tube. You can just replace the whole thing. But if you're thinking about picking one up, you want a Benelli M4, but you don't want to spend 
Highly recommend the Panzer M4. Um, I've, I've put the time into it. I've tested it. I know it works. So that was my review for the Panzer M4. Thanks for watching. Y'all be safe out there. Peace. Alright guys. <clears throat> Fuck that.